where we are talking about relational adulting. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so it's a very interesting chapter here uh, when, when you're navigating uh, your uh, child's, your adult child or uh, teenage child's relationships because so much is different today than it ever was when we were growing up. Uh, whether it's, uh, you know, being able to uh, look for relationships online or if it's, uh, you know, I mean, there's just so many different things going on. From but, friends to boyfriends. Yeah, exactly. Boyfriends, yeah. Exactly. So, so if you, one thing that stood out to me uh, was the relational stressors uh, where they talk about teenage stress often stems from the accumulation of busy schedules, school pressure, family climate, and peer expectations surrounding friendships, conflict, dating, and social norms. Many of these stressors are directly or indirectly relational as our learners negotiate peer opportunities, peer acceptance, and peer tensions. Right. So there's a lot going on uh, thanks to things like social media where friendships are different. Uh, they, they can hold on to them longer uh, or they, I mean, social media can, call, can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. Uh, so it's important as parents to, uh, to be, uh, be understanding of that and be aware of that. And, uh, and probably as, you, as your child is young to have some boundaries around uh, phone use and social media. But as they get older, having those conversations and making sure that they're, they're doing okay and that their friendships are being healthy and life-giving and, uh, and not, uh, not draining to them. Right. And you're always going to be concerned no matter what, who their friends are. And, um, you know, living in a smaller town helps you mm -hmm. kind of know who their families are, the kids are. But as your kids get older and play sports and music and stuff, they kind of get out there. So they're going out the door saying, see you later. Yeah. And uh, you're at the door asking, where are you going? Who are you going with? Yeah. When will you be home? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's hard not to over over parent um, at that moment but um, you know they have so many they have to navigate so many friendships at this point that we didn't really have um, mm. growing up you had you know kids on your street and kids in your class right. our kids your kids um, now have you know a whole um, they can know. make friends from gaming online exactly. in exactly. other countries even they can make friends uh, through uh, social media and stuff like that. Uh, th there's a lot of connection points that they have that we just didn't have. Right. Want to talk about dating? Yeah, let's talk about <laughs> dating because Anne did this perfectly with all her kids, so oh we'll hear gosh. all her stories. Yes, no, I'm, I'm oh. kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Now this is a, this is a tricky minefield to navigate as a parent, uh, and and I can testify to that. Uh, but I think the important thing is to. Uh, keep keep the conversations open and and don't be afraid to have those talks with your children about sex sex and sexuality about marriage and and living together and and just you know letting them know where you're at with some of that and how you feel but also being sensitive and understanding that that this is a new age and this is a new generation and relationships for them have uh, I mean, it definitely changed in some ways that I think if you're coming from a more traditional background, it's, it's hard to navigate sometimes, but uh, we, need to, we need to be understanding. So it says here, uh, let's resist putting so much energy into the wedding ceremony that we lose sight of what's more important, our hope that our kids are walking into marriage as healthy people, a healthy couple, and in many cultures, a healthy joining of two families. So understanding that, I, I know that uh, you know, as I've been able to do some weddings and stuff like that, I've all, always tried to help them understand that the wedding is one day. Uh, and there's so much energy and so much money and so much time put into that one day. But a marriage is a lifetime. A relationship can be a lifetime. And so uh, always help your children understand that and know that and look for uh, the kind of relationships, that, once again, that are life-giving and that can be... Uh, supportive of who they are as a person and as an individual. You know, and you want to see your kids lifted up by the person that they've chosen to just date. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, one of my kids had a significant, significant other that um, 
I used to say that that person sucked the air out of the room mm -hmm. when they came in, and you could just tell that they didn't they didn't uh, put your child um, kind of in. You just want to see them respectful of your child, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we've been know. there too. Yeah, we've, yeah. I mean, girls and boys. I mean, we are in the thick of all the. None of our kids are married, and we're in the thick right. of all the dating mm -hmm. where since our kids have gotten a little bit older, we can now look at who they're dating as, po they're not, you know, 16, 15, 13. Now we can actually look at some of the people that they're dating and think, will this person yeah. be part of our family eventually? So. And I've lived vicariously through my kids with the opportunities they have for dating. Like, hey, have you tried Match.com? Let me help you, <laughs> let me help you, let me see, let me see what this is like. Uh, because I know from my generation, I don't want them going off to bars and nightclubs and meeting people that way. But you know, if you can put a profile together of who you are and what your standards are and what your beliefs are online and find people that match that profile, I'm like, oh, hey, I'm all for that. And I think there's other apps out there other than Yeah, match. yeah, there's other apps that you don't want to go near. Besides Match.com. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so I know that I've been uh, kind of uh, probably a little bit too excited about opportunities for my kids to meet other people but right. uh, but I, you don't want to push it you don't want to rush it and uh, and I think kids take longer uh, this this generation takes longer to get involved in more committed relationships in fact I know watching the youth group uh, it, it's interesting that that for many kids dating is just a, just isn't even a thing uh, until they get into high school because uh, in, in many ways they're over committed to so many things They don't have time for relationships right. Now my son dated through high school, but my girls did not right right and one didn't even date through college one did um, But yeah, I mean and your kids are they're all different. They're gonna be all over the map if, you, if you've got one child, they're gonna be different than your neighbor's child if you've got three kids They'll be all over the map, too. I'm sure all your three your four right. kids um, have dated yeah, oh, different yeah. kind of people. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, but you also have to trust that they are now, um, they are, you're now going to see all the things that you've instilled in them mm. from, they need to respect themselves, regardless of what the relationship looks like. Mm. They need to respect, respect themselves and, um, you know. And it's hard. It's hard sometimes to see them in a toxic relationship where you got to kind of pray them through it and, and uh, you know, you know, if you put your foot down really hard, you might push them into it more. But you also have to kind of coach them and love them and and pray for them uh, so that they can see uh, whether or not uh, what they're involved in is is healthy for them and life giving. Uh, and then also, I think uh, you know, for me, it, it's important for me that they um, meet somebody that shares faith too. And, uh, and so that, so that can be, uh, I mean, you gotta be careful with that. You gotta be careful with that because I know that uh, my kids, you know, I would love for them to meet a good, strong United Methodist uh, person, but it may not work out that way. It may not work out that way. So we'll see, we'll see. So, so you gotta be flexible, uh, understanding that you want somebody that treats your children well, respects them, loves them, affirms them, and, uh, and for it to be a healthy relationship. And when you find that connection, you do it whatever you can just to encourage that relationship. And if they've got, good, if they've got a good circle of friends, um, of the same you know, right. boys and girls circle of friends, you know, they'll more than likely make good choices. It's mm -hmm. when they don't have a decent circle of friends is when I think they can kind of mm -hmm. not make the best choices. Right. Um, but. All my kids have made mistakes with who they've kind of dated and stuff like that, and I'm sure yours mm, oh yeah, have yeah. too. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, helping just helping them navigate through that is yeah. is our is our is our job. So. So be there with them, love them, uh, pray for them, care for them. Uh, they're going to go through relationships, whether it's uh, you know heterosexual relationships or same sex attractions or whatever. But you just. You, you continue to love them and care for them and provide a, a safe place for them to explore who God has made them to be and who they are in Christ and how they connect well relationally with other people. So with that? With that, what? 
Is that it? I think so. <laughs> Unless you have anything else to nope. add. No, I did like the last paragraph. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I did like the last paragraph. Um, you know, all it says is doorme doorbells may ring or may not ring. Boyfriends and girlfriends may be something we pray for or something we dread. We might long for our adulting kids to have more friends or maybe we wish they had fewer. But in the midst of this variety of family situations, our teenagers and emerging adults will come in and out of that front door by themselves with friends and with romantic others. Every time that that doorbell swings open, we have the opportunity to either welcome them home or to bless them as they venture out. I thought that was great. Oh, yeah. Every time they come in and every time they go out, we have the opportunity to work on that relationship and um, or just bless them as they go. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway. Absolutely. We continue to love your kids and care for them and hope for the best. Happy dating. And happy dating. Happy yeah, really. yeah, 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 exactly. So we'll see you next week. Take care.